Well, hello, this is Perry Peacock with Wilderness Innovation. I'm here in our shop along, this is a part of our production line for sewing, our sewing line for our gear. And uh, the other day I was going through some old boxes out in the back in the warehouse and uh, I kind of came upon these old uh, snowshoes for, that I uh, patented and uh, designed and patented back in the mid 1980s uh, when I was an engineer with uh, Easton Aluminum uh, and also it was uh, through uh, Easton subsidiary Reflex Sports primarily made snow uh, ski poles. But anyway, I, I made these uh, snowshoes, designed them while I was there, and uh, 36 inches long, eight inches wide. Uh, I never liked to use anything smaller than this in the day, and you know, nowadays I know most snowshoes are never this big, but uh, when you're around in the deep powder, like around here, and you're not on a groomed trail or that sort of thing, uh, these work really nice to have enough flotation to keep you from sinking too far. So I'll give you a little rundown of a few of the features uh, that kind of made these snowshoes unique. Uh, back in the day there wasn't hardly there wasn't really any snowshoes that had any color on them. So these red frame, this is a red anodized frame. And uh, we also used a red, uh, cherry red powder coated frame. <clears throat> and so our snowshoes had color on them. So that was kind of unique back in the day. It's really common nowadays, uh, you know, but anyway, but it has a Cordura nylon deck, which is uh, very, very well known these days for a dur very durable pack cloth and that sort of thing. Um, I, I started, you tried this out uh, after uh, studying Will Steiger's expedition to the North Pole back in that time period and how they had run, they had run through their moose hide uh, mucklucks within days of, of getting out on the Arctic ice and they wound up taking and cutting sections out of the uh, covers for their uh, sleds they were pulling with all their gear and made the, made uh, soles for their mucklucks out of Cordura nylon and they walked a thousand miles on the Arctic ice in them and worked very well so I thought why not use them for a snowshoe deck. Nice thing about it is it gives you a lot of flotation because there's very few holes in here so even in powdery snow you're not puffing a lot of snow up through here so it, it helps with a little extra flotation uh, there's less places for these to snag going through uh, brushy areas that sort of thing since it gives a very smooth profile and uh, has very lightweight and uh, that sort of thing uh, another feature you notice is the toe very large toe for most snowshoes don't have a toe that's more than about right here, so we're probably about twice the about twice the length of a regular snow on a, a toe on a snowshoe, and uh, that I did I designed that because of the light powdery snow to give plenty of flotation on the toe. So I found in uh, some of this uh, get on north slopes of some of these mountains up here snowshoe and and the toes on regular snowshoes would dive down into the snow and you'd about anchor yourself in and couldn't get out hardly sometimes. So I had extra flotation because of the size of this toe. And because of the Cordura, gave some extra flotation up there. Another feature of the toe is, is the amount of upturn of the toe. Not only the length, but the upturn is over six inches, which, uh, which helps when you're in deep powdery snow, when you pull your foot forward, it, it automatically wants to make the snowshoe ski up on top of the snow. So very little effort to get the snowshoe back up on top. So that made snowshoeing a lot easier in the, in the conditions I was typically into. <clears throat> um, the cleat is another unique feature. Um, this one's made out of stainless steel. And it actually, most cleats of, of, this, time, of this time period uh, might have had a, a uh, two angled cleats in the back here, and then uh, one cleat going uh, perpendicular across this direction, uh, <clears throat> right on just ahead of the ball of the foot. And, uh, and I needed, I found I needed more traction because a lot of areas where I was going, when you got up close around a ridge line or something, you get into crusty or, or drifted pack snow. And I found that that type of cleat did not give me the traction I needed. So I designed one 
that had uh, dual angled cleats going forward clear out to the toe of your boot. And so I had to have a little bit bigger binding on here. Most bindings only went to about right here. Uh, but I needed, I needed something bigger to get a little more uh, leverage to operate this thing because I could actually, going up very steep slopes, I could actually uh, kick, the, kick the cleat here into the hard packed snow. And I could kick in steps. And I, I went up some very nearly vertical places at times going up over some areas. And they, these things would bite right in. I could just go up almost like an ice crampon. And so this made a very nice little snowshoe. Um, and uh, you know, it worked very good in its day. And I want to take it out here and run it through some paces, maybe three or four miles or something, just have a little fun with it. And uh, I haven't worn these things in years, uh, honestly. And uh, so that would be kind of fun to do that. And meanwhile, I thought I'd just give you an overview of what the snowshoe is. And then uh, we'll go out and take her for a spin. So Harry Peacock, Willard of Salvation. Just having some fun in the, in the snow. Just wanted to show you something I have a blast from the past. So, uh, some things I used to do back in the day. Enjoy your time outdoors. We'll cut over to the outdoor segment here and take these babies out for a little spin here.